Hi and welcome. I'm Nancy Eha and I will be your instructor for this class, Beading Fantasy Flowers. There's a story behind how this class came into being. It was about 25 years ago I saw my first Victorian crazy quilt. The embroidery stitches were so opulent and beautiful and immediately I said to myself, that's beautiful, but now how am I going to turn those patterns of embroidery patterns into beading patterns. So over trial and error over many, many years of asking what if questions about beads and fabric, I came up with a technique I call crazy beading. And in this lesson, we're going to concentrate on turning two embroidery stitches into beading patterns. We will be taking the colonial knot and turning it into a stop stitch and we will be taking the lazy daisy stitch and discovering ways to adapt that for using beads. The project for this class is to create one or more fantasy flower and upload it to our class gallery. We'd love to see your discoveries as you experiment with beads. I would like to tell you two helpful beading tips. First, when you see me beading in the videos, you will notice that I have, it looks like a flannel on the back side of my fabric. I always put a piece of flannel or light cotton batting on the back and stitch through both of those layers. The reason is that helps cushion the thread tension so that the fabric doesn't pucker. And yes, you could use a hoop but I've never gotten used to using a hoop, so that's my workaround. The second tip I'd like to share with you now is how to make a secure knot to both start and end a beading thread. A secure knot would be something you would use if you were sewing on a button. This is how I make a secure knot. But an easy way, if you're uncertain, is just to take a couple of fibers and pass the needle and thread through those fibers till you see a loop, put the needle through the loop and pull. The knot will go down to the back of your fabric. Do that a second time just to be certain it's a secure knot and then cut off your working needle and thread. Here's a supply list of what you will need for creating beaded fantasy flowers. You will need a beading needle. I use a size 12 sharps, but you can use any thin needle that will pass through the tiny size 11 seed beads at least two times with double thread. Beading thread. My preference is silamide, and you can learn more about silamide in the next lesson. You will need a 12 inch square of lightweight woven cotton. It would be the weight of the woven cotton that quilters use to make quilts readily available in quilt shops. Do not use a very tightly woven fabric or one that is knit because it will stretch when we do the techniques. You will also need a 14 inch square of lightweight flannel or very thin cotton batting. What you will do with the fabric and the batting is you will center the fabric on top of the flannel or the batting and then by hand make basting stitches in an approximate three inch grid to hold the two layers together. When your project is completed, you will remove the basting thread. You will also need small sharp scissors or an embroidery scissors. Also size 11 seed beads and a small variety of beads slightly larger than the size 11 seed beads. You can find a small variety of size 11 beads in your major craft stores. So let's go on to lesson one. 